Do a welcome. Do, do a, a welcome. welcome. You want yeah. to do a welcome? Yeah. Like an introduction. Well, what, what we do, we normally have an intro. So we've got oh, a, right. a pre-recorded intro and then it'll just go straight into us having a convo. Fantastic to be here. Thanks, Alex. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> this, get on with the questions. This is fantastic. Uh, that, that's how it should be. But, uh, but I'm actually really excited about today. Um, and Alex, you are absolutely a role model of mine when it comes to business and growth and accelerated growth. And I've got Tahi. We've got Tahi today. And Tahi, you're a huge role model to me in the sense of stand-up comedy. Um, you're somebody who's always been nurturing and always there for me as, as a stand-up comedian. And, and we've got a few good stories around that. But I'm really in- in- excited having Thanks, you today. Tahi. Now you are, look. Now you're, you've got an amazing background. Not only you start off as a teacher, you went into comedy, then you became an actor, then a business owner, and also a producer and a writer. You're an entrepreneur, and you're also a Logie nominee. So, mate, thank you so much for coming I on. Forgot board. a drug dealer. Drug dealer. No worries. <laughs> no, they're just they're just jokes. Guys. <laughs> <laughs> I play the drug dealer so often, people think it's real. You, know? you do. You got that stereotype so often, yeah. I don't smoke a drink, like you know. It just <laughs> but people get so disappointed when they find out the real. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But look, honestly, mate, thank you so much for coming to. Because I know yeah, time you. is precious Pleasure. for you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Alex, this is your first time meeting Tahir, isn't it? Oh yeah, it is actually. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I'm going to follow him on social media straight after good. this, definitely. Uh, <laughs> now, Tay, just, just to let you in, like, um, the Growth Manifesto, the podcast that we're on today, it's all about business growth. And the idea is how to inspire others, you know, to become the best version yep. of themselves or how to push through it. Now, you've done a lot of this kind of stuff. And I suppose what Alex and I are really intrigued in, and I'd love to know, how does your journey start? How do you go from becoming an English school teacher to a comedian to a business owner? Yes. Well, look, I was always interested in comedy. So even when I was at uni... Um, I was always writing comedy, collecting comedy, watching, you know, I just loved it, always loved it. And I remember in primary school, I used to get up and do these speeches, which used to make the uh, the, the school laugh, you know, the right. sports reports and things like that. So it actually started back then, which I had no idea, but I just kept it up. What school uh, did you go to? Beverly Hills North <laughs> okay. and then Nawi Boys. Oh, nice. Now we boys. Now we boys. Does that still exist? No, got knocked down for units. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's all of Sydney. <laughs> exactly. Everything's getting knocked down One for of my units. Cousins. <laughs> um, so, we, when I was teaching, like, I, of course, the, the, I love teaching. I didn't leave teaching because yep. I didn't like it. I, I actually quite enjoyed it, but uh, the other things sort of took over. And I used to use a lot of um, my classes. Everyone would say, Were your classes fun? Yeah, they were fun. But guess what? They were under control too because I love psychology as well okay. yeah, yeah. In, in business. Like, I also used it. And I thought, and I did a four-year teaching course, not a bridging course. So it was all for teaching. So we did spend a lot of time on psychology. Of, or, and I think most teachers, I think even in business, I think more people should you know, study psychology, even with business. I think mm. they're very, it's connected. Um, so, you know, I would, students are smart. Kids are smart. Like they know what they can get away with. So I used to be at the front door of the classroom, wouldn't go in until it was silent. I'd never walk in when it was all quiet and they're all talking i'd never go when there was all you know talking and and i i, I hated that thing when you walk in you say okay buddy settle down settle down calm down like i yeah. wait at the door don't know the kids are cotton on it's all silent they're all waiting then i walk in it's all peaceful you know i used to have, have the uh the seating arrangement very important right very very important i used to have certain kids right around my desk not in the back corner they didn't they, they didn't decide where to sit i decided oh really so you took full control full over control it. yeah right? yeah um, I would never yet, like, you know, even when you, as a two, you walk around, you just put a hand on a desk. That's enough. You know, yep. That's enough to, like, so, and I used to hear other classrooms and, and they were noisy and the teachers were saying, shut up, sit down, quiet. I think, <laughs> How do you teach like this? You can't. Yeah, you, yeah. You gotta, you, because what school, that was Nawi, wasn't it, where you were teaching? No, no, I, was, I went to school in Nawi. I was, yeah. my, my school's, my last school was James Busby High School. James Busby. Yeah. No. Local. Yeah. Great really? school. Great school. Give me a little bit of a, because I actually Sefton know Sefton High school. school. I did Sefton. Um, I did a couple, bit of casual teaching. So uh, Sefton was interesting because yep. that was half half um, selective and half local. Mm-hmm. Oh, geez. That's an interesting mix. So I had a great experience. Like, you know, I had these gifted and talented kids and then just some local kids as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, this, the kids would like uh, really, really – Fully, fully into their work. Yeah, but how do you, how did you come about? I mean, like having that patient nature, like uh, talking about the psychology of things, is that you didn't judge these kids, you didn't belittle them, or everything, like telling no. them to sit down, shut up, and do that traditionally, because it's going to evoke something else out of a child straight away. That's right. You actually tr- tried a different approach where it was done with respect. So, how did you, who That's inspired right. you to, to do that? I, look, I just work, honestly, I'm, I mean, I don't want to take credit, but doing the psychology, I just worked it out. I thought I don't want to teach like the other way. Yeah. So. 
the kids would enjoy my lessons. Uh, it'll be there'd, there'd be a couple of minutes of humour. It'd, it'd be yeah. like the David Letterman show. Mm. Like it's an night <laughs> show. Yeah, sure. So the first couple of yeah. minutes, especially for the seniors, would be like I would actually try these j- jokes and gags out. It was, it was amazing. It was like <laughs> yeah. a, you know how Letterman come out comes out yeah. and does a couple of minutes of just standing. Is that what you used to do? That's what it was like. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. cool. It was really. It was. Really, and you got laughs. I got laughs and, and yeah. And, and those laughs were a bit like addictive, right? Like yeah, oh wow, yeah, I can yeah. make people laugh. That's yeah, yeah. kind of a fun thing yeah. to do. And the kids is love it. And then we used to, they used to learn and they used to you know. And the thing is, they want to do the work for you. It's like mm. as a leader, even in business or sport, how how you like? How do you want to inspire your workers or, or staff even? Even when we ran the businesses, sure, like, you know, Alex, you know, your business owner, like you could do, you could run your business several ways. Definitely, and you could be a dictator. Yeah, it'll it, the work will get done, but your your staff will feel different. Yeah, correct, right? Yep, or definitely. you can mm. now there's uh, there's different ways to achieve your outcomes. Yeah, so you know, different people they're different ways. So I just think there's always a better way for everyone concerned. Like you know, you could be the worst boss ever. And you, you still get results, but people will be talking behind your back, and they're not going to give you quite the hundred percent. Yeah, you know, like, like they're and so, on. how do you get a hundred percent out of people? Like, what's your approach? I mean, because obviously, like you've got students, mm. that's one style yeah. of person <laughs> yeah. to get a hundred percent out of. But I mean, obviously, like you've had like some businesses as well, right? Um, and so, you know, so what's your approach there? Because obviously, like you've got like um, a fair few. Of um, the cafes, right? Like, yeah, 19, we'll, we'll, we'll the come shed. to that. We'll come yeah, to that. Yeah, yeah. We'll get into the shed. Like, that's an amazing story. But I mean, like, how, like, the psychology behind. Well, w- one of my rules in life, Alex, has always been treat everyone equally. And, and I know that's like, okay, it's not like, it's not a throwaway statement. So I treat everyone. I don't think I'm more important than any other person. So one of my bugbears is when you see, um, I don't know, like a famous person. Think they're really important, and they just <laughs> yeah, treat. yeah. I go, how you're a human being, like a, a big deal. You got a bit more money, but who cares? Like, you know. And, and I'm not talking about, uh, say, Barbara Streisand wants to have a a, a white piano, yep. in her dressing room. This is part of a contract, yeah, right? yeah, sure. In a dressing room, in a hotel room, and on stage. So backstage, three, three yeah, it's going to be three. in a hotel room. It's yeah. going to be white too. I say, good luck to you. Like, you can, you <laughs> yeah. can, if you, if you've, uh, you, if you've, you know. If you're a legend, you've, you've, you want to earn that or you want to demand that and you've been successful, that's fine. But that's different to treating people. Like that's, your, that's request. Like, you know, yeah. if you want to do some crazy stuff, request blue M&Ms or whatever, go for it. But don't treat everybody you see along the way differently because you're no more important than any, any human yeah. being. Like, you know, that's, that's one of my approaches. Like, so it really, you know, who do you think you are? Whether it's the, anybody doing any sort of job, treat, yeah. them, treat them as an equal human being. So does that also then kind of set the same standard as well because because that's like on the side of treating them kind of like certain uh, I guess like uh, so say for example with like a respect but at the same time is the expectation the same across the board and so you know if somebody isn't performing as much you like mean a business? student yeah in yeah business. or the students as well like, like is there like a certain standard mm-hmm. like would you just set Oh, absolutely, because and if like, they don't hit that standard, you just tell them like you tell everyone else the same way. Absolutely, like, I would I would set a standard for sure, Alex, and that's a good because I I would actually turn up right, and then um, I'd expect two lines, like you know, and I'd be so stringent yeah. on it. If anybody was out of line, bang, they'd be have to be made an example, right? You'd do a few times yeah. before that they learned, right? So that's a standard because the students know what they can get away with. Yeah, and there would be disappointment if they didn't follow. Say they didn't hand a task, you know, I'd be disappointed. They would see that. How would you show disappointment though? Because like you can show it in different ways. Lie on the ground and, and <laughs> kick and scream. <laughs> oh my God. Cried. Um, You've crushed they, all they, my hopes and dreams they, as they'd a see, teacher. They'd see it in my attitude and facial expressions and things like that. So, yep. and it goes back to how, so, you know, it's like playing for a coach. Yeah. You know, and it's a good way when you're playing it. for a coach, right, in a sporting team, uh, coaches again, like a, like a business boss, they inspire their players in different ways. Yep. So some do it through fear, some do it through intimidation. Others, like you know, in sport, some players say, "Yeah, I really want to play for this coach. Really want to try my best." Yeah. You know, and and that's the sort of uh, you know feeling I want in the classroom. Mm. So the kids would come in and they really want to try their best for you, and they want to bring yeah. the they want to do their homework and they want to succeed and they want to you know. I remember there's other teachers who did it through fear. Yeah, I remember. Kids oh, were saying, mate, like, I had those teachers too, though. There was a maths teacher in particular, right? And he was notorious for it. The kids would do his work, but he he got his results yeah. differently. And then I thought, okay, that's one way of getting results. Yeah. 
but at least he's getting results. Right? Yeah. There's other teachers not even getting any. Like, yeah, sure. It would just be muck up and. But and I, I agree. Every with day, you. every day, screaming and shouting. I said no. Look, I think we can all relate to it because I remember being at high school, like maths wasn't my strongest suit, right? <laughs> Either was English or history. <laughs> <laughs> what was it, Tony? <laughs> Woodwork. <laughs> was it really? I cured it, except for this. Really? In, yeah, year seven Woodwork. and eight. Woodwork. But I, I, I've got a big, bit of a thing with a kid called Jackie Nung. <laughs> year seven and eight, yeah, I came second to him in both years. Both years. And I know I made a better pencil case than him. <laughs> I killed yeah. his pencil. Oh, mate, I swear. Yeah. I, I, Jack I, is listening to this. I hope he does. Jackie, you know, I'm still coming after you, bro. I swear. I, I'm, we're going to make trays again. Wood, but, woodwork was great because like, I had two other brothers, right? We went all through Nawi boys. Yep. So, um, you know, my parents worked out, what's going on? Like now we've got three ladders, three coffee tables. <laughs> 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 Can you make them different colours now, three please? Everything. Yeah. We don't need three of everything. Everything's coming through. You know. The old man would have opened up a shot. <laughs> hey, you know what I'm really into? Like, you talk about inspiring others. You actually are quite inspirational yourself, and I want to ha- know how you inspire yourself. You started your stand-up comedy career in 1995, correct? Yep, correct. So you went out there. So did you leave two things? Did you leave um, teaching altogether when you did that? Good or? question. No, I didn't. Um, I mean, d- just to go on the stand-up comedy, like I, I kicked off at the Sydney Comedy Store. Uh, on Parramatta Road, right? Yep. The olden days in Crystal Street, Leichhardt. And I, I've i told the story before. Like, I, I turned up. I knew I wanted to get on because I found out that this place where you can get – How did you find out back in those days? Because I it was open, hard. So, somebody, oh, yeah, because there was no internet. Oh, there was, well, but it was the beginning told me there was a, You used to somebody, talk to people and stuff yeah, or something, yeah, right? Yeah, Actually, like, what we're doing now is amazing. <laughs> yeah. No way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Um, somebody told me about open mic night. Yeah, so yeah. When I first found out, I said, what is this? They said, anybody can turn up and just get up and do comedy in front of an audience. And to me, when I heard that, it blew my mind. I thought, oh, my God. Yep. I had to get down there. Oh, so that's how much you love comedy. Yeah. Like, you're like, oh, my God, someone will listen to me to stand up? Yeah, other people would freak. Like, they go, no, why I'm doing that? I said, for me, I go, yes. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to get down there, right? But, of course, I was nervous like everybody else, right? So I turned up to the senior comedy store, put my name down, and then chickened out. No. Yes. Did you even have a set put together, or were you? Yeah, gonna I had riff? a couple of minutes. Like, okay, you know, yeah, I, yeah. I had a couple chickened of minutes. Out. I chickened out. I said, uh, "No, I can't do this. I'm not quite ready." Right? <laughs> well, what happened in that moment? Like, because obviously, like, it looked I, I just, because in that moment, I mean, that yeah. happens across the board. Yeah. You know, with everyone, time, right? Yeah. Like, they're yeah. like, "Hey, there's this thing I want." Yeah. You go, and you're like, oh, "I can't, I can't I just, do it." I knew I wanted to do it, but I just, uh, in my mind, I said, "I'm not ready." Okay. I'm not mentally, yep. ready. Right? So basically, did you shit your pants? Yes. <laughs> I did. <laughs> yeah, but get this, it goes more than that. So I turned up six weeks in a row and, and didn't I didn't stand. get up. Okay. Yeah, six yeah. weeks in a row, I didn't get up. Yep. Week five, I was mentally ready to get up. I was going to do it. But guess what? They had, audience numbers were so low, they took the show out of the comedy room, like the, the, the venue, <laughs> and put it in the front bar. <laughs> yep. Oh, wow. Uh, so I thought, oh my, the, the audience was that low. So this, all of a sudden, the stage was set up in the front bar. Yep. Right with Parramatta Road, buses going past. <laughs> couple of nice. old drunks like just at the bar I said I thought nah this can't be my debut <laughs> <laughs> this was like your first time yeah, yeah. standing up doing comedy yeah yeah wow and so I waited another week and then and then I finally got up I had a couple of mates with me um it went well you know I, I got I got the uh the the, the bug and, and I was away and that was a bug do you remember any of your first jokes that actually landed on that gig and just remember, this is a business podcast. <laughs> so I don't know how, how funny they are. I, I, might have, like, I might have done a few jokes around Bankstown, like where I grew up, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah. It was a lot of my early stuff, and I still I might still talk about Bankstown now. But, yeah, okay. Um, but like, yeah, a lot of the early stuff was about my parents. and uh, Your Turkish background. Yeah, 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 it, yeah. All that sort of stuff. But I look, I got up, and then I, came, I, I kept going, and then I went to open mic everywhere. Yep. For 18 months, I basically, anywhere there was open mic, I went there. Yep. How many times a week? What three times a week. Okay, so three times a week. Yeah, people, like I see new comedians starting now, they go, oh, you want to go open mic? Oh, no, no, I'm not on. Who cares? Turn up. I just turn up. Can I get on? No. Okay, I'm, I'm going to watch. But it was a bit easy back then. I think there's a lot, you know, a bit more rooms yeah. there for now. But three times a week I would be at open mics, 18 months straight, hustling for gigs. Yeah, but I think that's a big time. one though because I think you, it's like um, people um, – who really make it, they don't ask for permission. Yeah, yes. They just push hard Absolutely. as fast as they can consistently forever because Absolutely. they can't help otherwise. Like it's just like this thing and I think there's a whole conversation around like, well, if you really want it, just, you know, just go out there and, yeah. you know, do it for free, you know, like and like, try 
to speak with people or ask this or just Absolutely. do that and just hustle like crazy Absolutely. because everyone else is kind of saying, oh, well, maybe I yeah. shouldn't and I'm not allowed and I can't do that. It's like, don't no. worry about that thinking. I don't know kind of how that thinking um, has been instilled in us, but it's there and it actually holds people back quite a lot. I'll, I'll just rock up and ask. Yeah. And, yeah. and a lot of times I say, no, it's all right. I'm going to watch then. And then you see open people like new comedians, like they do their set and they leave without even watching the uh, the, other the MC or the headline act or yeah. anything. Like, why are you leaving? We should be watching. Yeah, it's true. Why are you true. leaving? I don't understand. They just go and go. Or, and then it, it just disappoints me. Like, yeah, you really want to make it all. But you, your hard work does pay off. At that, and this is an amazing stat. In 1996, you get voted Sydney Comedian of the Year. So you're in the game for one year, and this is at Harold Park Hotel. Now, yeah, for people who famous, don't know, famous Harold Park Hotel. So that's Hotel. apartments that, now too, is it? <laughs> yeah, it is. It is, it is. But, but don't forget that that was that was the birthplace of yourself. That was Carl Barron. That was Will Anderson. That was yep. Akmal Sali. That was all those guys. Comics. You become comedian. Robin, Robin Williams rocked up one night. No way. Yeah. Really? And, and stretch limousine. Like he rocked up and did did a set. Yeah, and it was Monday. I remember it was Monday night. Incredible. Uh, open mic night. So you take out Sydney Comedian the year, a year after. Um, so from not getting you've, – you've buckled most probably six times and then you thought, mm. no way, I'm, I'm going to persevere with this. What was the thing – I never got my prize, by the way. Didn't you? It's supposed to be $2,001 coins. No way. I don't know if it's a joke or not, but I never got it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the worst joke. <laughs> but was that, did that confirm that you were a stand up comedian at that point there? Like, like going on three times a week, persevering, then winning that award. What did that do for your comedy career? It was really, look, it was really good. Like, the, I, was, I was kicking a few goals. And then yeah. in that year, too, I, I did my first set on the footy show. Yeah, oh, yeah. NRL, when people used to watch. Yep. Um, <laughs> and it was live TV. I didn't know what I was doing. Like, <laughs> when I thought about it, like, years down, I thought, what, what am I doing? Like I could have easily just, uh, but I just did it. I said, yeah, I want to do it. But you know, it's like I, I didn't think about it being live in front of a national audience, whatever. And because in that moment, if you do badly, like everybody will know. Everybody yeah. will remember. If you do yeah. well, they go, okay, that guy's funny. Yeah. Pretty good. But if you do bad, like there's, there's, yeah, there's, yeah. there's, there's innate dangers there, right? There's innate dangers there. And just, but, just on the Harold yeah. Park on the business side, yeah, you know, yeah. you'll find this interesting because there was, this room was a, a incredible room. History, Monday nights, and then I would break it into Friday, Saturdays. Yep. A lot of, uh, you know, a lot of people, you know, started Jamal and a lot of acts yep. ac started there. Then they decided to build units. <laughs> it's a business idea, right? Yep. Fair enough. And b rebuild the pub as well. Yeah. And So they rebuild it. They've got the bistro, they've got the pub area, they've got the poker machines, mm -hmm. all the units behind it. And then once they build, they open it up, right? Then they thought, oh my God, we need something to attract the people. What are we going to do? You had it. <laughs> <laughs> You had the goodwill. You had yeah, the room yeah, there. Yeah. Like as a business person, wouldn't you say, right, this is iconic with goodwill for years and years. Wouldn't you build a comedy room? Mm. It was already – the punters were already there. I, I would have yeah. built a nice 200-seat like seat room. Uh, have your po – have the bistro. I'm not saying don't have that. But as a business person, like you thought you would have built it. And then yeah. you would have had all the people coming through on the weekends and they just threw all that goodwill away. And then at the end, then they thought, let's bring comedy back. And they, I, I got late. invited. It's too late. I got invited back to the first show there. I was excited. Oh my God, comedy's back at the Harold Park. You know where they had it? Yeah. In the main bar. Oh, jeez. Shocking you're sound. Me. Like, you know, uh. I go, this is a joke. And, and people are trying to just have, uh, we're, we're trying to say, be quiet. These people are here to drink and have a chat. I don't yeah. blame them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Also, like, it's not even a dedicated room. Yeah. So it's, that's, that's an example of, you know, business where they had the chance to build something beautiful and they keep the goodwill. And they just, you know, it's too late. They, yeah. they take the eyes off the ball. That's that's what it was. I've got to ask that. you about business. At, at what point did you transition from okay. looking at comedy being, a, let's call it a hobby? Yep. At that time, because it was amateur. You weren't getting paid for this. No. At what point? I, I, I was getting the odd um, support gig at the comedy store. Oh, yeah, and, cool. and I was pumped. So let me, t like, so it was early in late show, right? 60 bucks yep. a, sh a, a spot. Yeah, well, wow. as, as, as that was so. big time, right, back then. 120 bucks, I lost 30 bucks of tax, there's 90 bucks. Did you pay tax? <laughs> back then I did. <laughs> <laughs> I still do now. <laughs> um, so 90 bucks, I thought, this is awesome. For yeah. me, like, it was like, because yeah. I was still teaching, I was, uh, I was earning income, but the, the, the money wasn't important, but the actual ability to earn some money through comedy, again, yeah. blew my mind. I thought, yeah, this yeah. is just, it's a bonus. I didn't even care about the money, but like, Oh my God, I'm telling jokes and I'm actually getting paid for it. It's yeah. incredible. Yeah. My last year of, uh, of teaching, I was getting really busy. The comedy was getting quite busy. I was getting yeah. a few bookings and mm -hmm. trying to juggle two things. I was taking a lot of time off school. Yep. 
Were you jigging school? The principal didn't mind. <laughs> I, was jigging. <laughs> <laughs> I was jigging. I love that word. When's yeah. the last time you heard that word jigging? Uh, yeah. Back when I was at school. <laughs> it's, it's an old school term. I and love I to, it. Because I used to do uh, the school plays and I do a lot of extracurricular activity, yeah. um, the principal didn't mind. I, she knew sort of what I was up to. The teacher would come to my shows. Uh, so I Free had tickets like, for them? Free tickets, yes. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I had like 22 days off the last year, right? And the teachers would be relaxed, so I had the most days off. Um, On top of all the school holidays, which yeah, is like yeah. an extra 50 oh, days. No, 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 <laughs> <laughs> Alex, <laughs> come on, Alex. <laughs> the teachers deserve this. Uh, Do you, you know what they go be, through? Imagine being a student, he goes, Awesome, he's not here again. <laughs> he's not here again. Yeah. <laughs> Just on that too, like I used to be, um, I used to, at the start of the uh, term, I used to put an in, insane amount of preparation into the term. And then the rest of the term was relaxed. Right, so I'd, I'd do my prep. Yep. It's like business, right? It's the yep. same sort of thing. I approached it probably with a business mind. I didn't know at the time. Mm. But the pre- and while I was doing all the casual teaching, all the different schools, I used to sponge all their, you know, what they've done. How do they do it? Because every school's got different ways to do things. And uh, so all these different techniques and information and, and um, do a lot of preparation and then I'd be relaxed. So when the bell yeah. went at three o'clock, I was out before the kids. <laughs> gone. <laughs> gone. No, I'd be, yeah, I'd be, there was not, and I'd see teachers hanging around that day. I felt like they needed to be seen to be hanging around like till five o'clock, just doing work at the desk. I had nothing to do. I'd just leave. Yeah, wow. And, and they'd get there like early in the morning, like, you know, do, what are you doing? Like, my yeah. lesson's all prepared. I, I know exactly what I'm doing for the whole term. Uh, and I think a lot of them would approach it like on a daily basis, which is a, which is a stressful way to do things. Yeah. Yeah. And so you like think about things a lot, don't you? Yeah, like I do, if you yeah. plan things out, like and you absolutely. consider things and you love to learn, it sounds like, right? Like no, you're absolutely. trying to so sponge from everyone. That's what you're saying, I, right? I, Just I, I did absorbing was, yeah. it. Yeah. But I think that's a big part of your success as well, right? Like that kind of it's like a hunger to learn, to be uh, better, to, to find a smarter and better way of, you know, of absolutely, Alex. So performing, like doing things, you know? And I find it intriguing when people are not that way. Go, well, how do Same. you what do you want to mm. know like you want to become a comedian? Why not watching the other people? Like mm-hmm. how how do they do it? How they got different techniques? Yeah. So my, back to your question, Tim. But last year I was I thought no, I got I got to leave. So my brother and what I. What year are we talking about now? What, what, roughly. It must have been the late nineties, early two thousands. Yeah, so, sure. Somewhere around that time, um, my brother and I we opened up a a smoothie juice bar, yo, frozen yogurt bar. Yep. In the city. Sydney Central Plaza, right in the city off, you know, Pitt Street Mall. Yeah. And this is before Boost Juice and all these other Yeah, companies. I was about to say, like, that's pretty we good were the timing. Leaders. The, yeah, well, like, we were there, like, we had the six flavours of frozen yogurts, low fat. We used to have a yeah. lot of celebrities to come through, like, you know, I, I remember the time. And then we used to have uh, juices, ju- juices, yep. uh, wheat grass, all this sort of stuff, before anybody else was doing it. So we could have probably franchised, but we just, we didn't know what we had. We How knew. did that go, that business? Really good. So yeah. Really good. And so what it enabled me to do, my brother and I opened up the business so I could take time off. So yeah. oh, to support, I, yeah, to support the comedy. Yeah, yeah, so right. I, so what what would happen is I would tag off to festivals, or I got to go to here for a gig, or there for a gig, or I got to get interstate, and you know my brother would take care of business, obviously. And when that wasn't on, mm. I'd go back to the business and work. So yep. it, it was, we did that because I, you know, at a school situation, I've got a there's a there's a responsibility. You know, the principal, there's With days off and juices you don't. <laughs> <And so laughs> well, I take off and come well, back. Apple, you know, I'm apple, the boss. Yeah. <laughs> cool. How did you make that successful, that first business? Because obviously, like, it's the first business, right? Yeah. Like, it's, of course, I'm a school teacher. Yep. Now I'm a comedian. Now I've got to make some money to be a comedian. Cool, I want to start this business. Yep. And it worked. It worked. Well, but like, why did it work? Or how did it work the first time? Because most people that start a business don't make it work the first yeah, time. Yeah, that's true. That's isn't true. It? How many people fail? Yeah, yeah, yeah the just constant. So yeah, how did you, well, my what pa- were some of the things that happened? My brother had been running a seafood shop uh, in the mid-city as well, close by, very, mm. very close. And uh, my mom was helping him out and different stuff. So I, I saw a bit, little bit of business. And, and while I was a uni, I'd always help out on Thursday nights and yep. weekends and do some shifts. Yep. I help out the family business. So, I, you know, I had a little bit of inkling understanding and, and a bit of exposure to it. Um, but look, we, we did a bit of trial and error, honestly. <laughs> we did a bit of trial and error and we set the business up as Brett. We set the business up when the food court was set up in, in 2000 or something. Right, uh, yeah. So, and um, Pitch Street Mall, like in Pitch that Street one. Pitch, oh, okay, that would have been expensive for rent. 
It was like they charge but, a lot. I know. Yeah. They, yeah. They, <laughs> like it's got to work pretty much straight away to it's got to work. To fund Look, it. it did. Thank goodness it did work. And I remember the first day, right? You, you, you'll enjoy this, Alex. My brother and I opened up the first day and we looked at our turnover. And I'll tell you the turnover. It was like six hundred and ninety-two dollars, <laughs> right? And then we we looked at each other with a, what the hell have we done, <laughs> right? For a day turnover in the city, it just wasn't. Yeah. Like like six hundred. Never. And we just looked at each other with, oh my god, we. So we started getting new products, different stuff, and diff, you know, and then turnover just we just increased and increased and increased, yep. and you know, to, got to a level where we're doing, I don't know, fifteen, twenty k a week, and yeah, okay. you know, things were going good, and um, and of course in business, of course, it's not a success until you've sold it. Yep. A lot of the ways people go, you know, sometimes you stay in business for too long. Yeah, mm. sure. Right, and then you, it goes downhill, and then and then your business is worth nothing. Yeah, yeah. It's like so when, when do you know is that? time right ah, because there's a that's timing a thing right yeah. that's the yeah. tree i was i always look at the nightclub analogy right because people open up a nightclub right mm. and at first it's always busy yeah and it's pumping it's yeah. a new club it's hip-hop and yeah uh, and you got this place it's just pumping and the owner, owners are going that's it we've done it we've struck gold right and at that moment like you know that's when they should sell but of course they can't because the turnover's there it's great it's yep. pumping right and eventually, like, you know, there's another place that opens up and then they lose a bit of business and then they get a bad reputation or, or okay, that place, no, we've got, we got a better place, newer place. Business starts going down. It goes down and numbers start struggling, turnover drops. And that's when they try to still <laughs> offload the business. Exactly. And at it, that yeah. point, you know. So yeah. you've sort of, you've set it up for free, like, you know, and you've yeah. got a booming. So you, it's, is it tricky, Alex, trying to get out on top? But um, I always get out earlier than later if you can. I guess it's also about the passion, right? Because I say, for example, if you had a comedy business, which I'm sure that you do, yes. you're not going to sell out of that ever because it's always there, right? Isn't that's it? a good point. This is that's my, your passion yeah, now, this right? Yeah, my passion. So, so there, mm. Of course, there's the passion business, which is, that's always there. Yeah. And then there's the money business. Are you saying web, web pages are your passion? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it totally is my passion. Yeah, like it I love is, this space. Yeah. Oh, the man. more you get to know Alex. I, that's love, what I love the digital marketing. It's my thing. Like yeah. I love inside it. and out. Because I was going to say like, you know. I couldn't do comedy. <laughs> like I'm the guy. <laughs> I disagree, Alex. I disagree. <laughs> no, I think no, you'd be good. Comedy, I but think it's not good. like I'm like the here going, oh my God, there's a, there's a stand-up yeah. place. I, you know, like, yeah, yeah. but, oh my God, there's a free c- c- course on actually how to market on the internet. Like, yeah, I'm, yeah. like I'm there. Off. Yeah, yeah, you're Straight there. away there, you know. Do, do you know one thing I am noticing with you, Tahi? You're a fantastic promoter, whether it's business, comedy, whatever it may be. And I'll give you a really good example on this. In 2003, you bring out your own show called Lord of the Kebabs. Right. Yes. Now you sell out. Now this is check out these numbers, Alex. Over a hundred shows around Australia, over twenty thousand tickets sold in one year. Now that's huge. Mm. And and I think what a lot of pe- business people go through and struggle with is self promotion or promotion of their business. Mm. Mate, how do you do it? Because it, it's to get numbers like, and then you've done it time and time again. You know, uh, the Melbourne International Comedy Festival, which is our prestigious comedy festival. You got two thousand one to two thousand six sold out all the time, and then when you went back again. You've just from, finished from Lebanon Love, which is a, a play for yeah. like, like that. They actually went off because we did that purely for the Arabic speaking. Okay, even yeah. though my background's Turkish. I know how's yeah. that? You sold out, didn't you? It was amazing. Like, <laughs> yeah, that was, but I, I tell you how I work. I actually work backwards, which is yeah. uh, people find it interesting. So I actually look at the end result and work my way backwards. So the first yeah. thing we consider is wh- what's a title? What's a catchy title? Right yeah. at that time, like we had. Everybody loved it because Lord of the Kebabs, the Fellowship of the Hummus, right? Yeah, um, <laughs> I remember that. Yeah. And all the media loved it, and everyone would, the, the title would grab you. They'd have a giggle, and then that's your first step, first hook. Yeah. Right? So we, we'd always we always consider the title, the poster. So we're working backwards. We, we're thinking of the end way. People do it the other way, right? So we we get title. What's the poster look like? What's the image look like? What's the marketing look like? Yeah. Right? And then then we, we what's our leading time? Where we're going to go. And then we write the show right at the end. I find that's the easiest part for me. Wow. You write the show at the end? Yeah. We, we actually go, so people do it the other way. They write a show, then right at the end they go, okay, let's come up with a poster and title. Hang on. That's yeah. one of the most important parts for marketing of your show, for yeah. marketing. Yeah, I was going to say, well, yeah. would you do that in marketing as well? Yeah, we do that for all the content that we make. We start yeah. with like the content idea and then that's we it. think about like the hook yeah. and then actually um, the people that we're going to go after. Like, And then yeah. at the end, you just put the content in. Oh my God, Alex, I'm, I'm getting yeah. validation. I love this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is the best. So yeah, yeah. Like, but it's the right kind of thinking, right? Because like, like, it's to think about the audience first. Yep. Not so to think actually, about yourself 
first and then go, cool, so they'll just like it now. Yeah, well, because I just because I want them to. But like you're it. doing it because you know what you're doing. I did it accidentally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean I just did we just sort of something we just did, like, you know. Yeah. We, we, we sort of go backwards and um the, yeah, the title's very, very important and yep. um and and those live stage shows were, were fantastic. It's a it's a great it's a great yep. time. It really was. We, we, we did like uh, off the, we did the fat pizza tours as well. Yeah, that, that was, was huge. amazing. Like you know, you got a world record on that, didn't you? Did you guys did? Um, we did take a pizza around the world. That's right. Yeah. Um, so here's a little bit of a goss. You know, just a bit of inside information for you know for the people on the on, on, the, on the podcast. But we the world record was officially broken. No. So it was, for what? Know, Sorry. So taking a pizza around the, the longest yep. delivery of a pizza. Okay. <laughs> so it went from, it went from Europe. Right to New Zealand, which is the longest flight you can take. Yep, and it was an official one. It was take, it was given to the rugby union legend John Alomu, the, <laughs> the, the, yeah, the late yeah. John Alomu. So it, was deli- and so it was the longest flight you could take. So it could never be broken. So that was actually official. Mm-hmm. But when we did the TV show, of course, it was a we pretend there was all this smoke and you know <laughs> ice coming out of the pizza and all this sort of <laughs> cryogenics and all this sort of stuff. Yeah. But it was all fake. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we we'd already broken the record, but we we so officially sure. it was in the books. But yep. when we you know bit of TV. Inside information, so which is pretty cool. Would, yeah, I love it. So, what? And, and you most probably be interested in this. How do you get the confidence um, to self promote? Because I think self promotion is one of the most difficult things to do. I, I'm happy to promote you. I can promote Alex all day, but when you're promoting you as an individual, how does that work? What's the mechanism behind that? Yeah, it, it's a bit weird. Like it, it's a bit hard, but I do have a um, a manager and an agent yep. that, that looks after a lot of the stuff, for it, and they they. It is easy when someone else pushes, you know, pushes your barrow. Yeah, but in the beginning, like you were selling stuff for sixty bucks a night, and then all of a sudden oh, yeah. you sell twenty thousand tickets. So there must be a part in between where you can't afford like a manager. Yeah, in the beginning, and an agent, you know, like you know. So, so what true. are those kind of the so first true. parts where you like, I got to go up and talk about myself and sell some stuff about myself, and like, 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 is that like kind of the thinking behind it, or was it, you know, so what was the well, process? Early on, like, and and I got a good mate, Joe Vardy, mm. right, the, the Italian comedian, who's very huge. He's big and is, is one of the best comedians in the world, in my opinion, right? Yeah. And uh, him and I, and we both started the open mic together, like virtually the yeah. same time. So we, we yeah. know, we've known each for a long time. We did a lot of work together. We do a lot of, we've done a lot of tours lately. It's been fantastic. You guys have got one coming up at the end of the year. I know Joe's got one. Are you, are you yeah, yeah. on board with that? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And then at that time, of course, there was Akmal, there was Carl Barron. There was all these people on the open mic. It was, it, was a, yeah. it was a beautiful time, right? But Joe and I, we um, became good mates straight away because he had a very business approach to comedy as well straight off the bat but he had these business cards made up i know it's nothing these days but back then what you got a business card <laughs> you only had an open mic night you yeah know, these you days know, you don't even have business cards anymore because there's linkedin yeah, exactly yeah, yeah, you don't yeah. even have business cards yeah. but yeah. back then it was a big deal yeah. like just, it, it was a big big move and i remember he did it and, and some of the experience comics said well who's this young kid like he's got a business card like in my who does he think he is yeah 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 they were actually put up by it but in my head it was like yeah, that's a good good on him. That's a great idea. I want to I want to know more about like what what he's up to. Yeah. So we became close, and we'd we'd approach it. You know, how can we promote ourselves? How can we get some more work, some gigs, and all that sort of stuff? But it was it was early on, like you know, it's a business yeah. approach to it. There's no of doubt. Of course, so having somebody yeah. there to support you, like in the process, yeah. to speak about things was super Absolutely. important, right? And I think that's something uh, across all business, right? Is that you know, it's yeah. hard. It's, uh, it and is it hard. C- c- can be lonely, yeah, and absolutely. especially the parts before it's successful, right? Because yeah. at that yeah, point, yeah, yeah. you're nothing yet, right? It's just True. like you, cool. It's some person that's got a card. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, cool, fantastic, mate. Yeah, yeah. cool, yeah. nice work. Yeah, 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 well done. I should get some more business cards printed. Out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Re- go retro. Yeah, <laughs> but, well, but people still ask you though. Hey, you got a card? Because so, oh, I know I get a lot of cards, and then what do I? I take them back and I try to fight them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like just, a, but I tell you another, yeah. like it's all attitude as well. Like I, I remember yeah. doing comedy um, in the states. Right, this is uh, I went out for for a competition. Yeah, uh, what's it called? Last Comic Standing. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. yeah, I didn't enter, but they asked. They 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 were doing one season. You know, seven, seven seasons in, they said we need yeah. an international flavor. Right, so. They they asked all these comedians from Australia. I went across. I knew I know TV, so I knew it was a, it was a bit of a joke. Yep. I went for the trip. I went to a couple a couple of comedy clubs, and these other comedians are taking the competition seriously. Yeah, against TV, they'll do what they want. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. 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 So I'm there, like you know, looking at these their comedy clubs and looking around, meeting these comedians from all around the world. It's beautiful, right? But um, the thing is, like over there, 
the, it's the, the attitude of the American comedians is yeah. business. Right? So at the end of the show, yeah. like there's, an open, there's an MC, there's a support act and there's a headliner and they, at the end of the show, they're all lined up unashamedly with T-shirts on one hand, cash on the other yeah. hand, DVDs, right, and they just sell. Whereas in Australia, we think, ah, oh, don't, don't be a tosser. Yeah, so in yeah. the US, it's, it's, that's such a big thing because yeah. they're so kind of entrepreneurial, right? And they, get, and they get, good for you, good for you. Like, you know, and here, yeah. and I remember there was a couple of years when I think, should I sell my DVDs? Oh, hang on. And I thought, no, hang on, snap yeah. out of it. Like, because, uh, you know, take the effort. Yep. Do the me- I, I do the meet and greets anyway, which I enjoy. Yeah. Set up your merchandise stand, you know, and over a whole year, it becomes quite substantial. Yeah. It can become like 50K over a whole year. Yeah. Yeah, so, absolutely. You know, They're talking you know. about DVDs, I've got your one here. <laughs> Again, <laughs> retro, and, retro, and, yes. And there's a story behind yeah. this. I don't know if you even remember the story. Right. You, um, you actually, I, I saw you at Oatley Hotel five years ago, and I said to you with these big, bright eyes going, Tahi, Tahi, man. My name's Tony, I want to get into stand-up comedy. And within three nanoseconds, you reached into your bag, you had a whole lot of these, and you go, mate, get up as much as you can. You handed me a DVD, didn't charge me, which I thought, oh, what a top bloke, this guy's <laughs> mates for life. Mate, and so that was that was unbelievable. So thank you so much for that. And you've had a really good career also in business. And we're gonna get into business and mate, you know what I'm really intrigued in? This is an interesting moment. Just on that tone, people, yeah. I, I do like to give, uh, the, when someone's like really pumped or excited, I say, here, have this DVD. Yeah. And another my, one of my rules when I'm doing merchandise, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. I love this. When someone comes up and tries to pay in coins, I never take it. <laughs> <laughs> I hate coins too. I've got no, like not, a not, coin bowl at home. No, no, I don't, I don't, it's not that. I just say, listen, man, just, you know, they're trying to get like two bucks. Oh, uh, yeah, button. sure. I said, man, just, just take uh, it. Yeah, yeah, I should cool. buy take property it. off you. If you, don't, if you don't have, yeah, yeah. If you come and buy proper of me, and, just coins. and come with all these coins, coins. take it. Just go. <laughs> <laughs> take it, man, take it. You, 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 you should take this. I, you need this. On a serious note, though, you, and this, this is something we can all relate to, guys, is. Okay, your career's been great. It's been fa- fantastic. What I really want to know is, and the truth behind uh, a lot of good stand-up comics and a lot of successful business people, there's a point where you start to fail or you feel like you're failing. And and the, I know in comedy and in business, it's harsh. They're really, really dark moments. You don't have to share with us exactly what some of your darkest moments were, but what I'm really interested in is how do you deal with the failure? Look, there's been, in, in terms of failure, in terms of like gigs, like if you do comedy for quite a number of years, like I have, you're going to come across a lot of terrible gigs. There's no way around it. It just, it just happens. You get booked for, a, you know, the inappropriate gig or you rock up and there's no microphone or, you know, the crowd just doesn't like you mm. for, what, yeah. for one reason or another. It just, yeah. just doesn't work. Because for comedy, you do need focus. You need certain, you know, certain things in place, you know, yeah. and, and it doesn't always work. What happens sometimes is people come to a comedy store where it's all focused or a theatre. Mm, yeah. They see great energy and great feeling. The people are laughing and go, oh my God, this atmosphere is electric. I want that at my event. Mm, right? Yeah, yeah. So then that, that event's like a backyard party. <laughs> <laughs> so you rock at this backyard party. Yeah, well. And, you go, and they go, oh, it wasn't quite the same. Yeah, of course, because, you know, we're, in a, yeah. we're, in, we're outdoors. There's a lot of different stuff. There's, you know, people are walking around. There's food, there's drinks. Like, so, yeah. um, you know, I'm a little bit different to other comedians. Like, I... Honestly, Tony, I've I've had a great upbringing, you know. Yeah. You know, I'm not. I know there's a stereotype of the comedians being depressed and all this sort of stuff, yep. but I don't know. Like, I'm just I just enjoy. I genuinely enjoy what I do, and, I, yep. and live stand up is a passion of mine. I've had, yeah, a good solid upbringing. My parents worked hard. Yeah. Um, so in terms of that, like, you know, I'm not carrying any demons. Like, I just yeah. love it. And for me, it's about always reinventing. Like, you know, this is a you know, key word in business, of course. You got to read like I did. Stand up has always been my passion. Yeah, I've said that before. But then I did live stage shows, live theatre shows, and I did some acting stuff, and that went for quite a number of years. And a lot of touring, and we did corporate events, and there's different stuff I've been working on. And then we, I started producing, creating TV shows. Yeah, yeah. Again, like a different it, sort of mm. thing again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you got here comes the Habibs. So, um, there was a few few shows that you've got out now. Yeah, yeah. 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 And you've got uh, Street Smarts as well. And then, and yeah. then uh, uh, reality shows. I was on that Jungle show most recently right i'm a celebrity get me out of here yeah, yeah again i did that because it was a great experience yep not so for, none of those had else. any issues in terms of success or failure but they all just worked for you absolutely like because they said you want to i said yes i would love to do that show and then like, you just went in there because like and you didn't okay, mind how it went i didn't i loved it i, I actually embraced it I if you if you watch a show like you'll see that i was thriving in there and yeah. i'm i'm yeah, sleeping yeah. like a baby here yeah, you know, yeah, I was yeah. losing. I lost eight kilos in one month. <laughs> <laughs> it was just rice and beans, right? Just a third of a cup, right? Oh, really? But 
people were going, oh, you know, I was worried about the, the hunger situation, but the first three days we ate rice and beans, only small amounts, water, and I was okay. And I thought, at that point, I thought, I'm fine. Yep. If this is wor- as bad as it's going to get, I'm okay. Mm. And then I was relaxed after that. But again, I did it for an experience. Get a, not yeah. everybody can do that. You could have all yeah. the money in the world, yeah, exactly. and you are not allowed to experience this. Yeah. So, yep. And so I your perspective the like actually has like a big impact then across yeah. all your experiences because I, I think it. that's that's part. But also, I think like you've you've started off pretty well. I mean, in terms of your k- kind of hustle, and so then, <laughs> yes, like yeah, it's gone progressively since then. And I think yeah. it seems like the baseline. How like I'm just happy yeah. to stand up in front of a mic and talk to people, like it. you know. Yeah. And I think if that's the base. Then yes. everything is going to be upside from there, you know. Other comedians would be worried about, yeah. oh, I don't want to go on that show. It's going to, do, what's it going to do to my reputation? I said, what? Who, I, I'm not thinking like that. I'm thinking yeah. it's an experience. It's, it's, uh, it, it's enrichment. Like you know, to, sleeping outdoors for the first time. That was the first time I've slept outdoors camping. Yeah, right. I was scared. There was yeah. noises. There was baboons making noise and all this th- th- yeah. screeching. And I'm like, everyone's sleeping. Like, How could you sleep? I'm the yeah. only one like awake, just looking around. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, it sounds like you got the same. He's got the same mindset as um, Akmal Sali, where he, he writes in his book. You know, he goes, uh, "Your toughest gigs, your toughest gigs, all business dealings ever. If you can get through them, they'll make you a better person." There's lessons to be learnt in that every time, and that's what it sounds like that's you're true. doing. What's the lesson learnt here? Like, like what have I it's gotten true. out of the? Yeah, you yeah. Know? and you enjoy the successes even more because you know the the, the the downside. You know, you can you know the it, it can go. Uh, you yeah, know, it can go it can go bad. But as you know, Tony, my style is to not just say the jokes, include the audience in my act. Oh, jeez, like, like, like bring them into the thing. I, I guess maybe in business, like you know, if you can, I, I suppose it's connecting with your customers. I, you know, yeah. in comedy, it's almost the same thing. Like, but they're right there, like then, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> like yeah. immediately, yeah, right? It's true. like, do, do you know, the, we've I, got I, about twenty minutes together. <laughs> We're going to yeah. connect. You should see that. Actually, it worked really well for you the other night. I went and saw Tahir the other night at uh, Fox Studios, and just, just the and, other day, we, yeah, uh, this was. I, I thought it was scripted, but it wasn't. Um, and so Tahir goes out, and there's a joke about a pilot and about having a, a flight and everything like that. And he goes out to the audience, and he just he looks at one bloke, and what happens? Pick you go, one random guy. What, what do you do for work? Because I'm a pilot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they all and thought then, like this is just like full. No, they brought the house down. Yeah, great. and then yeah. I thought this is just a gift, right? <laughs> and then his girlfriend or wife was was a hostess. So this is just beautiful. Right? <laughs> <laughs> this is just beautiful, right? Um, but sometimes, like you know, when people say, "Is that is that all uh, script, like scripted and yeah. planned?" And I, uh, I guess I take that as a compliment because um, what they don't realise is it's actually yeah. harder to do that. I find yeah. it easier to improvise. Rather than saying, okay, Alex, you sit there, Tony, you sit yeah, there. Yeah. I'll say this, you say that. You know, you know how that is. Yeah, yeah. I'd rather just just wing it and just yeah, off the cuff. Sure. Like, it's actually a lot easier. Just yeah. riff with that. But, but you got to be relaxed. The comedians don't like. Oh, I don't want to talk to the audience. Why? Because I don't. You know, I got nothing to say. I feel just relax. Like if just have a chat. If nothing happens, get back to your material. Like, yeah. you know, what's the worst that can happen? And so you've got a certain perspective of strength around that. You know, I think there's like like a lot of people have like like I guess a fear. Like doubts, yeah, absolutely. You know, yeah. and I don't think it seems like you don't have that like innately inside you. Like it could be there, but it's very little compared to the. Well, I it's think fine. Just talk, and it'll yeah. sort itself out. What kind of wrong? mentality, you know? Yeah, I, I having what that can perspective. Go wrong? Yeah, the yeah. worst thing that can happen is that it's not going to be a funny exchange. All right, well, you go back to your routine. Yeah, exactly. Look, <laughs> and, and do, you know, right. do, do you know what he does really well? I reckon Alex, this is and and this is what I. So you actually have, and you were talking about connecting with people before, you have a genuine want and desire to connect with others. So when you see Tahir work with an audience, nobody, there's not much resistance when Tahir goes out, goes, so what do you do for a job, this, that, the other? No, there's an they, openness because the threat response has gone down. He's not going to hammer me. He's not going to yeah. like, and if it is, it's very light. And, and it's a beautiful yeah. exchange you have with your ex- audiences. So, you know, well done on that. And okay, so I keep it light. Like, you know, I keep it generally like, yep. let's, we're just having a conversation here. And the audience knows that um, okay, that's uh, it's just happening on the spot. Yeah. Yep. And it's you get a di- different reaction to that, definitely. Absolutely. Now, Tahi, look, let's 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 be up front here. We've talked about comedy. It's been good. It's been funny. We had some funny bits there, didn't we? Absolutely. Uh, yeah, that's always, uh, did you have some funny bits there? Mm-hmm. You, you know, you know what I want to find out really is you've got 19 cafes called the Shed, right? Correct. Correct that's me on those correct, numbers. Yeah. And you've got a new one called um, Little Ruby coming out. Now that's a new Ruby com- Little. Ruby, Ruby Little. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, Let's uh, for the business owners out there. This is what I'm really nineteen. Like some people struggle with one, right? Well, look, I mean, you guys would know. Like in, in Alex's bed, like in business, like 
so we started this cafe in the city, uh, my brother and two other mates, and, uh, and one of them before, I'd previously been in business before. So, uh, and then we, it was called The Shed, mm-hmm. good little concept, like, you know, just rustic stuff, everything's freshly done, nothing's just displayed and um, little quirky things like, you know, there's a lot of quirky things about the shop, but, um, and the coffee that the boys take seriously, like that's all they talk about. And like for Sydney, the, that's critically important. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah, like we're coffee snobs, oh right? Oh my yeah. God. And like so quick to like, they're dead to me. No, my, yeah. brother, my brother's like a gun, Bruce. He's one of what, like, that's all they talk about. Like just the beans, where they're going to get source of from and yep. which country and, and how it's going to be extracted and, and how it's going to be thing and the taste. Well, that's too, and, and so all day. And then we get the best machine you can get your hands on and not just, you know. So and they're expensive machines. Yeah. So there's like, there's there's coffee machines like 10, 15,000, like our machines, like, 30 or 40, it's like mm. the Ferrari yeah, of, the, yep. of the coffee. Like, so you, we get the best machine, they get the best beans and try to give the a consistent product, right? Then we said, okay, let's franchise this. Well, we didn't really want to franchise, we didn't yeah. actually want to go down the franchise road. Yeah. Uh, but what had happened is people, the, the, the diet had already been set. So we said, we, let's just go to like a licensing, uh, you know, road. And, but our, our legal advice was, you know what, this franchising's already set. All the laws and legal th- legislations all been set, so we said, okay, we'll just use, we'll call ourselves a franchise, and so we went down that path because yeah. we're technically. So it's a franchise. It's a franchise in that, but like in behaviour, it's different. We don't charge for marketing and. Um, you don't. Yeah, promotions. Like why not? Uh, <laughs> Alex is like no, because well, that's a like, franchise well, model, that's right? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's right. But that's, then, how do you do it then? Well, we, we have a flat fee, yeah. right? It's a flat fee every week yeah. instead of a percentage of the turnover. Yeah. And this instantly puts both parties on the same team, same side. So one team's not trying to hide turnover or, or you know, hide different ways. Like, you know, because mm. that's what happens in a franchise. Right. Let's mm. be honest, right? Yeah. Like people yeah. go, if you're paying 10% of your turnover. You're taking cash in. You're going to take, <laughs> yeah, or, yeah. or you're going to try to pl- play that down a bit. Yeah. Once it's a flat fee, they relax. Because we're, yeah. we're on the same side. Like they, so they tell us exactly, we got it all automated anyway. We know, we know the turnover, it's all, you know, there's apps and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, it's, sure. It's all, and the, you're, supplying, all different. you're supplying all the coffee to the shops as well? We do coffee and packaging. Yeah, right? yeah. So we, we, you know, we, know, we make our um, margin on that, obviously. Yes. But so they, they have a bit of freedom, a bit of liberty to choose their suppliers uh, in yeah. terms of like fruit, vegetables and different stuff. We, we supply all that. And uh, the marketing and the promotions is a, is a bonus. We just throw those as a bonus. Like we have these ideas and yep. things we can do. But that separates us. So we, we call it franchise, but we're not really a franchise. Yep. So people come and they go, oh my God, this is great. So we set a business up. You've got no idea for a better business. Right? We, it's, we, everything's set up. Yep. Full training provider, turnkey, you rock up, and then the whole, they get the whole training process. Are so, you doing shop set up as well? Yes, absolutely. We, we, really? We build it, a whole, everything's built, set up. They're trained, yeah, and and then in, in, in they go. So people go, oh my god! So because we, we, we've been on both sides, yeah, we've yeah. seen both sides, and we think the franchise system I always thought was just not fair. Yeah, I sure. Mean, this yeah. system is, and of course, Alex, as you know, like you see the the franchise now, they're struggling, they're closing down. Yeah, mm. Gloria Jeans, Michelle's Patisserie, all these sort of companies. Max like, Brenner's gone Max Brenner, like, well, yeah. yeah, all these and Donut King, all these. The system's not fair. Yeah, it's, they're robbing people, like you know, yeah. just to, uh, you know. To, in their setup, in their how do you, how can you charge like, pay pay your rent, pay ten percent of your turnover, three yeah. percent marketing, so thirty percent of your turnover, not your profit, mm. your turnover gross, and then pay your rent wages, and then still, how, of yeah. course, people are not going to make money. Mm, yeah, sure, they're going to struggle. It's it's just too one sided. So, we actually bucked the system. People couldn't believe it. We made a lot of noise, and then people that came in, were, all the shops are going really good. You know. Touch yeah. Me, of course. Yeah. And they want that. You know, we want longevity, right? They want second yeah. stores, third stores, and, and everything we did for 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 a longer term approach. Like we could have gone in there, yeah, being cowboys, yeah. set up fifty stores really quickly, made made a bit of money, and then just taken off. And but you know, I don't want people to invest three hundred thousand dollars and lose it. Yeah. So, so the people that purchased kind of the first store. Um, have purchased like a second one now and a third one. Like, is that well, what's happening yeah, at the some, moment? Yeah, some have purchased a second one and they want more. Yeah, okay. And, but we're very like you no, know, and so we have parameters on our site. So we, we have things like you know, if the rent is not in our parameter, the the size of the the, the, the shop, the location, if it doesn't tick uh, you know all our boxes, 
We say no. We've rejected a lot of sites. So what's the good location? Because I know this is a thing which yeah, everyone that has like a shop, yep. they hear about the word location, location. Ask uh, so how important is it? You know, like a, what is Very a good location standard? You know, for you. Very. Imp- uh, the location for us is um, some of the shops around us. What's what's around us? Mm-hmm. Like, who, who's there? What's what's happening? The flow of people, the way they walk. Like human beings, we're in a shopping center. We naturally walk in certain flows and directions. So we, you go there and actually have a look yeah, beforehand. Yeah, yeah we, we look at all that yeah. and then, you know, there could be, you know, we have a, like a, a little play area built in our little cafes as well. Mm-hmm. So the mums, they can sit down, there's a chalkboard and the kids play and they can right. just relax. And so we look at, you know, are there shops like Cotton On? There's usually Cotton On around us, yeah. different stuff. So it all sort of feeds in sort of well. So, um, but it's, it's, it's important. Like all that stuff's important. And, and we don't, a lot of people just, just because someone said, Alex, like you've got a great business now. I, w- I want you to open up here. That gives them a big head. Yeah. Oh my god, I'm a good businessman. Look, people ask me for another <laughs> shop. So what? Like they just they're just leasing agents. They just want to fill the shopping centers up. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Right. Big deal. Like um. So the 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 key is saying no. We've rejected a lot of sites that haven't right. met our guidelines and, and, and ticked all the boxes. So we so why would we say yes to a site mm. if we're not happy? If we're not prepared to put our own money into it, that's that's the question we ask. Would we put our money to open that yeah. shop up? If it's a no, then why would you ask someone else to put their money into it and, yeah. and, and risk their, you know? Now the track record is yeah. high now as well. And so now for the next person that purchases something from you, you know, it's like it's a, yeah. it's a high chance of success, right? Absolutely. And so there's a good yeah. kind of strategy there and it's a good like sales pitch almost. It's funny because we, we just yeah. had someone look at our business like, I forget, um, I remember my mate uh, Steve, one of the partners, say, say, telling me, but I think it was a legal entity or somebody looking at it so this is amazing. Like we we actually have a clean record. No <laughs> shop closes. Like she goes, I can't yeah. believe that in business. Like it's it's pretty rare. Yeah. Um, no disputes, no shop closes, you know, everything everything's going really well. Yeah. And we're very careful. We only open up because we spend a lot of time on the back end, getting the paperwork right, getting our systems right, make sure it's fair. We spend a lot of time on that uh, for slow. So now we just we do between three to six stores a year. Okay, and we're sort of amping it up now, as we amp it up. So it's been slow growth, long term approach. That's always been the way. Yeah, um, and so you started with one store. Yep, and then that was it. Like, and then like you franchised the rest, or, or, or did you create a second store? Franchised like all of them. You franchised, franchised yeah. the whole thing. So all of them are franchised. We got one company store, which is the legal requirement. Yep. So you need to run yep. one store um, successfully. Yes, and and that's the uh, uh, for a franchise. Uh, but our point is we're not, you know, some of the stores have been gun sites. We know we could have done well. We said, no, nah, sell it, move on. Like, you know, off it goes to someone it else. It seems, and, though, that, like, the passion for coffee, yeah, like, was kind of the same as the passion for comedy, yeah, but it was just, like, the brother that had that. For the right? boys, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's for the yeah. boys, but I think that's a critical part of any successful business. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, it's just to have that person in there that's so passionate about it that they're optimizing it because they love it. They love it. And they're talking yeah. about it just on the weekend because they yeah. just can't help but talk about yeah, it, right? And, and that yeah. passion, that sets a standard. And that yes. standard like, is what yeah. actually I think yes. uh, c- can help a company actually succeed over the long term. Absolutely. Like it's that, we've got that balance of we're, we're there helping them, but they've got a bit of autonomy as well, a bit of freedom. Yeah. Because of the franchise, you feel you're closed in. And, and there's just you, you, you got you're no, limited by everything. You're limited you can't do everything. anything. You can't do anything. There's no. I mean, I mean, these people are business owners. Give them a yeah. bit of, you know, let them show what they have as well. A bit of creativity, like, and some of them have, which has been fantastic. Uh, but and we do our own coffee as well. We, we don't just buy our coffee and change the labels and things like that. So <laughs> That's what you're I mean. roasting. You're roasting now, aren't we you? We roast our own coffee. Yeah. We have someone doing it especially for us. Uh, the Ruby Little brand is different yeah. as well. Was well, that so another business altogether? Yeah, so we yeah. just so we have the shed business and the shed coffee, yeah, purely for the shed, and, and it's a good strong brand, but uh, and good strong coffee. But the Ruby Little is just a coffee brand, basically. So that's for the coffee trade. So if if you've got a co- if you've got a cafe, Alex, you're not going to um say, listen, I love your shed coffee. You're not going to put the shed coffee uh, in there. Yeah, no, yeah, that's right. Because that's our that's our business. It's like you know, it's like a, a cafe putting in Gloria Jean's coffee. They wouldn't do it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what would you do yeah. that for? Yeah. So the Ruby Little is a independent coffee. Um, and again, the boy spent over a year or just, just on getting the flavour right. Yes, my friend, um, <laughs> he started this, um, this uh, it was a coffee brand 
called Single Origin. This yes. is like ten uh, years ago. Uh, Dion, yeah, Single Origin, yeah, yeah yes. Dion, and um, yeah. and like like he's like, man, like I'm getting into this thing. Like he was a property developer, yep. yep, and then he got into this thing, and then like he ended up like, uh, basically the um, the corporate side of things became kind of the biggest thing. Yeah, just the supply yeah. thing. So it yes. sounds like that's going to be like your yeah. your kind of. We, we did that because we've been doing it. We so we, we, we know the area. Yeah. And we we you know we know about the roasting, yeah. all that sort of stuff. Like we learned a lot about it, and we thought, again, like, well, how can we get you know maximize these opportunities? We you know we're getting yeah. like so and all our contacts and different stuff. So and the volume play there is amazing because it's yeah. just now just product you yeah. just sell, and it's not like kind of yes. the stores or foot traffic. It's like cool. Yeah. So how how smart can we be with this? Yep. Yeah. And how good is the brand? And if it is as passionate and as you know you as fantastic it, as what it is, yeah. you're gonna just be. You got it, Alex. You better come on board. <laughs> yeah. You sound like you, a good yeah. businessman. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to here. So do you, <laughs> mate. <laughs> but, but sorry, <laughs> yeah, one question. Just because yeah. because this uh, the thing we just said before. So when it's kind of on the yes. way up, right? You got 19 and you're about to go yep. into this other thing. How hard is it now, in this moment now, to think is this the time or is it going to be at 100 stores or is it going to be just when basically we're wholesaling across the US and to Europe and actually we're wholesaling back to South America because yep. <laughs> that's us. Yeah. You know, so, you know, so how do you going to actually approach something like that? Good question. Like Good question. I mean, the coffee trade gives us like a, obviously a separate business, mm -hmm. which it is. Um, and uh, if that gets really busy, like – Obviously, that's what we'll concentrate on. We'll just get out. Uh, but I, I think, um, I don't know, like the shed is like li our little baby as that's well. That's what I'm saying. It's like a passion thing yeah, now, yeah, right? Yeah. It's become a For your baby. brother especially. Yeah. And and all those, um, it's a good question. We, we do have a couple of uh, like different plans and, and really it's like everything, Alex, like every business for sale, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but it's interesting because like you Which found business? the perfect kind of hybrid, right, where – kind of the business is selling businesses. So it's like, yeah. it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, <laughs> like you made the hack. Yeah. Like you found the hack yeah, around, yeah. okay, cool. So you can sell constantly. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Sorry, Tony. No, no, no. I was going to say, so I was going to leave in with you, Alex, in the sense where with Ruby Little. So now we've got a, a coffee coffee company, coffee bean company, right? So you just, the question is how are you going to market it and how would you market it? If you had, if you had to go out there and you've got your own coffee bean company, how would you do it from a web profits point of view? Yeah, first I have to understand kind of coffee, the customers, right? Cafes. The audience. So is it the cafes or is cafes, it the corporates? Because I know the corporates have got like this massive amount of just constant flow of yep. coffee beans that go into this building. All right, cool. Who, who is it to, to hear if you're going to? It's a very good question. Like, Come um, on, man. It's an easy question. Like, who's your customer? <laughs> <laughs> customers, anybody who drinks coffee. Um, so the, the customer is the the, the, uh, the cafes. Okay, so all cafes, yeah. Uh, all, all cafes, definitely. And, and uh, of course, uh, the corporates for sure, like, you know, but that's, you need a bit of, uh, you need some contacts in there to get in. Like, obviously, a place like Star City or, or Qantas, you know, they use certain quantity but they got like you, you did quite a yeah, also say for example with banks the banks, banks are yeah. a big one are basically all the buildings in the city yes yeah, yeah. so all right they I all got, drink coffee i've yes. got cafes i've got corporates who else we got uh so we've got cafes corporates um and, and we've got people like, who want to take the packs home as well okay so at home all right yeah, alex like, go for re it retail packs <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. this is this is on the spot now oh, alex you've got a coffee company no no, no this is good you watch we'll, yeah, we'll yeah. get mad strategies out of this <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is what alex does really well this is perfect because i can also basically edit it afterwards if it's not good okay so alex you've got you, you're gonna yeah, we, we should put it we, we should put a thing like two months later all right Okay, cafes, corporates, and also at home. So that means take people just packs. take home packs. Thank you. How are we going to market to them? I mean, what's the budget? Like, is there like a budget? Limitless. Limitless budget? Yep. Well, you're going to have some sales people actually, you know, to find the cafes and to go there and just give them samples for free. Okay, so on foot sales? Yep. yep. And free samples? Yep. Yeah. Um, you probably have some other sales people that are going in to some of the big offices, trying yep. to find the people that are actually ordering the coffees. Yep. Um, and just doing it like that. Yep. Um, you probably have uh, the people at the, kind of the shed already yep. that work at specific at specific organisations. Yep. Yep. You just start to hand out stuff to them just to take back so I maybe like they it. can start to get kind of Alex, like you're killing a guerrilla strategy. I'm giving so much stuff away for from free. the inside. <laughs> you know? <laughs> no, I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. But that's the. <laughs> I know, yeah, yeah. Of course, cool. so if there was like a budget around it yep. and you have to sell it. Yep. 
Um, you have to be really, really uh, tight on the customers that are going to buy it first. Yep. Yeah. At the level that's going to be profitable. Yeah. Yeah. It's right. Because the fastest thing is to find a salesperson. Now that might be like your brother to start with, right? Because he's yep. so passionate about it, right? Yep. So that's the passion, right? But yep. then he's going to figure out a system on hiring a proper salesperson who will just go out there, right? Yeah. And then yep. just expand out True. that team, right? Now yep. he might just be able to hustle it all the way, right? Um, because there's going to be out there some big contracts, you know, just yeah. for to kind of supply for coffee, you know? Yeah, yeah. And so, but also the yeah. brand is going to make a difference, right? And so having a proper brand out there, that is awesome. And yeah. the p- p- people say, man, like I love th- um, the Ruby Little yeah. c- c- kind of brand. Yeah, yeah. That's going to be like a part of it too, right? So it's a full strategy, obviously. So, so if you've but if you're just going to go out there just to sell to cafes, yep. you got to find the ones that aren't happy uh, mm. or to, to yep. find the super passionate people yep. and then have like your brother speak to them. And have him just explain exactly the process that he goes through to to actually c- construct the roast, right? And because that passion, yeah, they'll yeah. be like, okay, we're talking yeah. the same language right now, yeah. right? And if you get like the high volume spots and they start ordering, then that's going to be like step one. Yeah, do, we, do, we, do we back it up I with the digital it. platform as well? The digital platform is hard because they're not going to go online to search for a supplier for coffee, especially yeah. the ones that – that are absolutely into mm. their coffee, right? Yeah, yeah. You might get some of the receptionists or whatever that have to find a coffee brand, but they'll already have some of the contracts already sorted, right? I, I'll be so you get person, in because I'll just go up to the receptionist. <laughs> G'day, lady, how are this you? You want good. some? Yeah, no, this is gold. I love <laughs> it. Is, 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 do I have to pay for this <laughs> session? No, 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 no it's, it's podcast the session. No, it's good. <laughs> uh, Alex is there. What, what <laughs> hey, thanks, man. <laughs> Appreciate it. I like that. So you would be targeting oh, more like great. the buyers. So from a social media point of view, so who are the buyers? So is it the receptionist? I probably wouldn't is be it? targeting them on social media at all. Like I'd be okay. going. Shh. Like you would have like a search, uh, some search ads on Google, just in case yeah. they're looking for a coffee supplier. Yeah, right, yeah. but you kind of want to buy the people that are doing all the volume and the yeah. people that are doing all the volume, they're getting already a lot of approaches mm. from all the coffee brands, right? Yeah. So they're not that, trying to true. find it, that's right? True. Is that what you're finding hard? Well, look, no, I mean, we're, we're sort of just doing organically anyway. So yeah, yeah. people find it, but everything Alex has said is spot on. Oh, thanks, mate. Honestly, yeah. like spot, all yeah. that stuff, I mean, I don't know if you... No, I don't have a coffee business, just to be clear he either. Just he's, just, he's just about to buy one now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're still, we're, we're, yeah, we're going to go into business. Because <laughs> things are in place. It's a pretty, yeah. it's a cutthroat business as well. Yeah. There's no there about it. There's a lot of yeah. people out there doing a lot of stuff. And of course, you've got people like um, uh, Victoria Coffee who hired, uh, what's it, Al Pacino. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Now, they paid him like mega bucks. I don't know what it, what it was. It was millions. Yeah. But guess what? The business went up by like 23%. Globally. Or, uh, globally. Really? Oh. Yeah. It's Incredible. like George Clooney and the Nespresso. Nespresso. Cafe. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, the Nespresso is yeah. like, man, like you'd kind of want to drink it because his face looks cool. Yeah. Like I'm just yeah. like, yeah, yeah. Like I don't even like him that much. But I'm like, look at him. He looks so stylish. I'm going to have a, I know. a yeah, coffee. Exactly. But it's not like the good coffee though, you know? No, and that's the thing. The brand makes a difference. Well, yeah, exactly. That, but that's interesting from marketing as well. Like, it, like it, I'm going to say politely, the lesser quality of the brand, the more you've got to promote it and the more of an influencer you need. So you need your George Clooney's or you need your Al yeah. Pacino's. You know, th- How do you... Yeah, That's on. a good model because the Nespresso model was like, they, they used to give the machines away for free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. have a free machine. Oh, really? Really? Yeah. I got a free machine. Yeah, you get a free machine, Tony, but guess what? Now you're going to buy all those pods. <laughs> I'd sell it on eBay. Yeah, yeah, that's- <laughs> You gotta buy all those pods now. Yeah, yeah, them. that's like, right. Hang yeah. on, this is smart because they're giving these machines away, but now they've got all these. You have to yeah. order all these pods. They didn't work in their machines. Yeah, so it's sure. an ongoing business, right? Yeah, one part of the time. Okay, like, oh yeah, but I yeah. think in terms of like the influencer stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so that's when you want to go um, to the mass market, right? Because right. it's hard to to sell everyone on something. So they'll be, but they'll be like, oh, that's Al Pacino or Brad Pitt. Or yep. George Clooney, right? Yep. And that's how they sell it, right? Because it's fast and yep. it's instant and it's everywhere, right? Maybe, but in maybe the beginning, you look at um, Pauline Hanson. <laughs> <laughs> What's Ruby a Little. What's a it's, Wake it's up ru- to yourself. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks for that part, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> All right, no, so that, that's a really important part. So, say so when we're going out to the mass masses, we, we we need influencers there. I think so. I think yeah. that's what's already happening out there. But I th- but it's expensive, right? And so before yep. you do that, there's like there's like a hundred to a thousand mm. steps first, right? So um, it, you know, it's like how you're going to focus on like your area first. So, yeah. You know, 
start with Sydney. Yeah, like yeah. then go like in to say Melbourne, right? Because they love yeah. their coffee too, right? Like, and yeah. then you have a strategy that is extremely focused because then like everyone starts to talk. Yeah, they've got it, and so they have it, and then you start to leverage off each other. Mm. Saying, oh, cool! Yeah, well, they just bought it. Yeah. So yeah. would you like the same yeah. thing? Yeah. Nice. Uh, you know, snowball effect, and yeah. that can happen. But, but the influence the thing in business is interesting, isn't it? Because, I mean, for me personally, I mean, yeah. unless you're you're the megastar, I don't I don't I don't include you as an influencer. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, you see some model. I'm an influencer. Really? What have you done? Walk the catwalk. <laughs> <laughs> How many followers you have? Oh, whatever, 50,000, big deal. Yeah, but they don't spend money because of a post and so on. <laughs> like you know it, like, like, like yeah. if, you, if you're a Kim Kardashian and you've got millions, okay, I understand that is an influence. And mm. when she says something, things happen, right? Yeah. Mm. And, uh, you know, I get that Like if when, you, when you're at that level. But I think a lot of people, the the uh, I read about the um, – Dunlop Volley brand. Did, yeah. you, did you read that story? No, I didn't it was, read it. It was magnificent, right? Because you know the Dunlop Volleys was about to go out of business. Okay, no, I didn't like, know that. I, I mean, I don't know how like this is within the last ten years, right? And it was about to go out of business. And this is a good business story. The a, a famous Chinese female actress, like someone. Well, I'm, I don't know, but like she's really well known. Yep. She's got millions of followers, and she did. She divorced her partner, snapped it in the airport. You know, casual clothing and with these Dunlop Volleys. That overnight, the sales went crazy. Yeah. To the point of wow. the company came back, they went global, they set up stores everywhere, and now and then they started getting to, they, then I realized, okay, we've got all this market, and done all these, then they started getting other shoes. So we can't rely on just on this shoe, which yeah. they've been doing for many, many years, right? You can't, what are you going to just do, promote your tennis players? That's not <laughs> enough. Right? right. So the Dunlop Volley came back as a fashion you know, fashion item. Yeah. Yep. And then they went beyond that. Like, so, you know, they, they went to all the other shoes. But that one moment being snapped in an airport. Yeah, that's a, a proper a influencer. Genuine influencer. Yeah, yeah genuine yeah. influencer. Turned that business around. Yeah. Uh, and they were close to being shut wow. down. It was an incredible moment, like in business, right? But to pay for that is very expensive. Oh. I think, I think, um, is it but, a but in well, though? Kylie Jenner. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She charges $200,000 for one post. Or yeah. more, I think, and a percentage maybe, but, but yeah, like it's at least a couple of hundred thousand for a post. Yeah, right. But, but then she'll sell. She'll okay. sell everything. That works. Though. Her followers. She has 130 million yeah. followers. That's like okay. six Australias <laughs> <laughs> following her. Right. Like if you see the likes, it's like five million likes on a photo. Yeah, yeah, five yeah. million people. <laughs> yeah. Doing that. Like I like to say, like, oh, cool. I got like you know like sixty likes. Yep. Just imagine hers like like just streams. Oh, gee. Right. But if you got a product like and you really want to get out to the and you can market, afford it, you can afford it. It's yeah. a great. Yeah. I mean, like that a Chinese actress, right? You would pay her like you know, imagine if she came up and said, "Okay, I'll wear your Dunlop volleys," and you give me ten million, and the company would have said, "What?" Mm. Like now that it's worth millions of like you know, you, you got to do the balance. Like you know, I mean, yeah. And my point is, if it's a proper influencer, yes, I don't count some person with oh, you got fifty thousand followers, big deal. Yep. You know, like, I mean, how much reach, how much, how much impact you're going to have on your followers? Are they just following you because you are someone or, or you have, you know. So how about this then? You flash your body. Because <laughs> how about this then, right? So there could be, you know. Um, you know what I'm talking about, Tony? <laughs> oh, no, no, <laughs> smaller, smaller influence, say, for example, the baristas who have other baristas um, who follow them, right? And so they're like, like you could potentially have somebody like that. True. Become an influencer to say, hey, look, I tried out this coffee. Fantastic, and you know, just like they're talking about the flavor, and it's got this texture, and blah blah blah. That blah. works. That could work, yeah. And that's really yeah. small. So I think there's like the big ones and the really really small ones. The ones yeah. in the middle are the ones that I think have best been kind of uh, have lost a lot of effectiveness over the last mm. two I three years so. because yeah, they've yeah. tried to extract as much money out of kind of everyone as possible. And said, so "By look, look, I am now like advertising." Some fly spray, and now it's like, like yeah. some shoe polish, and yeah. now it's like this. It's like seriously, like there's no integrity. Can you stop? Yeah. <laughs> I haven't yeah. done one. Like I mean, I, uh, <clears throat> I have been approached a few times, yep. uh, but I, I just don't know. I just I thought, oh, but you no. could do you could do a new you could show. do one now for the shed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, you could be like your own influence. That, that'd be a little bit weird for me as well. But um, but yeah, just weird. Like a company says, okay, you want to promote this? Like I got, uh, I don't know, those biscuit snacks. Yeah, d- different products, like you know. And, I think well, what, I'm going to go all this trouble. I'm going to record this thing, and what are you going to pay me a thousand bucks or two? Like, oh uh, yeah, like yeah, who can be bothered? Like, yeah, not yeah. for that little money. Yeah, yeah. But for more, you could find like a way 
Of course, to make Alex. It funny, of course, right? Yeah. Just to be clear, if someone's listening, he'll do it for more, yeah. it. and that, it will be yeah. funny as well. Like it'll be like almost a show because, yeah. like, I know, like, um, <laughs> if someone, a couple I, I, of I was girls. Just thinking, it was like ta- Tahir in, in Ubers doing coffee. <laughs> you know what, Alex? <laughs> no, it's because a good point. that's the way to do it. You know, because I've seen that happen before. Well, that, I mean, look. The point is that the company. What was weird? What's weird is I actually create, write, produce, and and perform. Mm. Right. So the companies don't understand. So I remember when um. We, as, as a fat pizza group, we did some commercials for Autobahn. Yep. Right? Yep. A- again, it increased. We said, you, you're much smaller than some of the other bigger ones. And when I say small, they've got 100 stores, right? Yep. But comedy always sells and people mm. remember stuff rather than saying, hey, we got these all these car parts. Okay, it's another commercial. People just you know, tune out these days. There's a lot of, a lot of noise, as you know, out there. Um, so we, we, we did the comedy angle with the selling thing. Business went up by 30%. We did another wow. year. We did another commercial year after. And we did our own stuff. Yep. And I was surprised. So that's how the good influencers are actually performing, especially if they can do something that's funny. Because if it's funny, now it's something which is engaging. Mm. Like, and they can yeah. remember it, right? And if you yeah. know that it's like a product style engagement, yeah. Yeah. Like you can actually kind of, you can talk about that yep. yeah. and make fun of it. <laughs> and Absolutely. that's fun because it yeah. becomes like man that's real it, it's kind of like the um the um the Ricky Gervais thing of how he promoted Optus was it or something yeah, it was some yes. phone yeah. co- I forget yeah. the company but he was like so I just got paid a lot of money for this yeah, 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 yeah. and Brilliant. that's it and like and, and it was so good and like and it went extremely viral right and so there, I think there's like an honesty component it? I just forgot yeah. who it was so it kind <laughs> of <laughs> failed on the last part <laughs> no it, it's absolutely true it, it, comedy comedy will get us everywhere and, and it will sell us a product Tahi, you've got amazing things happening at the moment. So you've got uh, Street Smarts. You've got second season of that coming out. Is that correct? No, is that we just did one season of that. You did the one season. Yeah. Okay. Um, and where do they watch that? Like, if, So if someone is listening, is it on online? Ten, I think it's Template. 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 Yeah. I'm not sure if it's there. Or, but just yeah, search on Google online. for Street Smart. Yeah, everything's online. Yeah, it is. I actually, I was watching the episode the other day. So oh, it is. It's, it's a great show. So congratulations on that. Um, you've got a whole lot of gigs coming up. You've got Ruby Little coming out and, and you're going to promote that more and more. The Shed. If people the want shed. a business like, you know, for a key term business with know nothing about it. Yep. And yeah. for the corporates um, who, who want to get um, some, um, some coffee beans that are probably passionately um extremely kind yeah. of fantastically made that yeah, was yeah. a bad description no no it was beautiful, but, it was beautiful. Uh, i'll personally turn up and deliver it yeah you know what that, that's but, really no, but that's a big one yeah that's a yeah, big yeah. one talking about that are you still doing corporate gigs at all are you still doing absolutely yeah okay cool so, so if there's anybody listening they can actually get in touch with you where's the best place to get in touch with you uh well i'm i'm on social media at tahir comedian uh, yep. so uh but you know T-A-H-I-R. Yeah. That's, you know, that's how you spell the name. So yeah. I, I, t- t- au as well. But um, <clears throat> I do uh, – it's funny because uh, over the years I've, I've just – because of the fat pizza and houses, all that sort of – all those yeah. shows I've done. So the corporates are really weird because the book – the person who books the the act thinks I'm going to turn up in a tracksuit. <laughs> <laughs> Doing dodgy <laughs> stuff and like stealing and knocking off some stuff. I go, you know, it's just a show. You know? <laughs> but you play it really well. <laughs> oh, like, you know, like I turn up you know, and then I realize, like, you know, I've, I've got a degree, all that sort of stuff. And, and of course, the punters, the, the audience, they know who I am. But it's just the person booking. And I've yeah. worked hard over the last sort of 10 years just to get past that. Now all the booking agents know what I do. And I turn up on time, do my stuff, engaging. I, I'll take it seriously as well. Yep. I think even in business, you'd like, yep. I, I apply that same approach. Like some comedians rock up, do the show and leave. Yep. And I always believe, turn up, have a chat, engage, you know. Yeah. Same way in business. Like there's, you know, you don't just make your money. Like, you know, go <laughs> Stand up. All right, see you later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. do that. So I, it's not a big deal for me. Like I'd never That's leave great. the – Back to I always do a meet and greet like after shows we always oh, do a meet and greet when we can. Tahi, you're um, you're beautiful with that. Uh, and it, we had what was it a charity event that we did that we hosted? Yeah, and your charity event was great. That's like you know, yeah. Tony, this charity event was fantastic. Yeah, it was, it was super. Really but you are an absolute gentleman because I remember doing that gig and everybody's excited that you're there. And um, it, was, it wasn't too bad. We raised thirteen thousand dollars in oh, one it night. Was incredible. I loved it. No, Brad. But you actually hung around after and you spoke to everybody and you engaged and you really showed this genuine interest. And and people I got kicked out. I was the last one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But do you know people? <laughs> and it wasn't because you were drinking either. Because <laughs> no, you don't no, drink. No, he doesn't drink. Alex, the thing is like. Well, we're hanging out there and, and I'm still getting um, 12 months later, I'm still getting people going, 
man, Tahir was awesome. Are you going to do this night again, et cetera, et cetera. So you leave that such a, a beautiful impact with human beings that Thanks, you show man. a genuine interest. And that's, that's the lovely thing about you. Um, and I was going to ask you if you had one bit of advice just to somebody starting out, what would it be? But you've already answered it really just in comedy? that. Comedy? Yeah, anything, business, comedy, or well, just following your passion actually. Absolutely. With, with comedy, like, I mean, it's, I, I guess it can be similar in business, but with comedy, you've got to get up as many times as you can. And I've told you this. Oh Tony. my God. You've got to get up. Like it's not, you, it's not about reading books and the same thing in business. Like you can read all the business books you like, but you got to get up and, and make a few mistakes, but you got to actually do it. Mm. Get up and do yeah. it. It's not, you can't learn business in a, you know, I mean, that, that's just like yep. an idea or, or, or different theories as well. It's like comedy. You can't learn comedy. You can read a comedy book. There's books on how to perform stand up. I've written courses. Yep. Well, like beginners in advance, right? Mm. But ultimately, you got to get up on stage and experience the different environments, the different audiences, yep. and come across all the different uh, things that will that will be thrown at you. And um, when you first start, you've only got your little set. Mm. Eventually, you, you 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 build a set, and you've got a lot more to draw from. And then, you know, if someone throws you something, you can go in a different way. So you've got a lot yeah. more tools to deal with the things that will be thrown at you, and and. And to do your job absolutely to the, you know your best capability. Yep. But that it's like a pilot who gets his hours up. Yeah, sure. It's, get, you know, it. it's the same it's in the business same. too. Business, yeah. same, same in business. Thing. You got to yeah. stand up and you got to just try. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You got to exactly. stand up constantly, and it's going to hurt in the beginning because because you're probably not going to be as good, are you? Absolutely. And then you get yeah. better the more you you stand up. You got to get like you got to get there and give it a go. There's no yeah. there's no other way. Yeah. You know, and it's like me. I knew I wanted. If anyone when I six weeks it took me to get up, I knew I was still going to do it and get up. Yeah, yeah. I, I was I was scared. Like that's normal. It's yeah. normal to be scared in business or comedy or whatever. Yeah. But um, in the end, you've got to get out there. Mm. There's no other way. <laughs> yeah. Did you? Curtain's got to open, and you've yeah. got to start. Yeah. I'm really curious. Did you actually see your life panning out this way? No, I did not. No, I did yeah. not. I mean, uh, as I said, I enjoyed teaching. Yeah. And um, I was quite you know quite content. It's not. I didn't leave teaching because I oh, I hate the job. No. I loved it. I actually quite loved it and it was, it was quite fun, but I knew there's always more that I'm always, you know, I love chatting business. I love talking about business. I remember early on I was, I was dealing with um, setting up a, a, a teaching, uh, what do you call it? Like um, a t teaching students at home, like, you know, like, like, oh, okay, like, like a home ed. Yeah. Like I was going to set up one of those courses. I was, I was mucking around with that sort of stuff, you know, years ago, you, again, like, so these are things I haven't talked about before, but I came up with this business idea, right? This little toy animal in an egg, right? This is, I'm talking 20 years ago, 20. A kinder so, surprise. Is that hang on. <laughs> Before, That's what I was thinking, Alex, okay, <laughs> it's been done. Yeah, yeah. But not when I first thought of it. So I was going to call it a pet egg, right? Yeah, okay. So the egg opens up and this little, and I was trying to go around and get the prototype made for it. I couldn't find anyone to make it. Yeah, mm. sure. This is years ago. This is before the Kinder Surprise, but all these yeah, other little yeah. uh, cabbage patch dolls, all this sort of stuff. And before Alibaba could just be like, yeah, yeah, cool. Like yeah, here's exactly. 16 options. Yeah, yeah. I, couldn't, I couldn't find. Okay, I knew. Okay, this this could take off. I just didn't have the the uh, the tools or the or the funding, you know, at yeah. that time. But I knew it was a good idea. But I just didn't know where. Uh, things have changed now. Yeah, people can get out there and things can happen. Like as you know, Alex. Like yeah, there's so many opportunities. There's so many different ways to do it. Yeah, the social media side of it, the the market, and you mentioned Alibaba. There's yeah. there's, it's just limitless now, really. It's just I think because we've come from a place where that that wasn't there before, and we know what that was like. Yeah. We appreciate it, but now like if you kind of had this, you know, kind of constantly. Yep. Yep. Um. It becomes just like, well, that's that's fine, but yeah, but like it's quite hard still, you know. Yeah, yeah. But it's like, well, not compared to not having any of it, right? But I think that thing is just kind of something that I think everyone has to kind of overcome is the fact that oh, well, I can do it all, but it's still hard. It's like, yeah, but you can do it all. Like it's so much easier today uh, than it was yeah. twenty years it, ago. It, absolutely. Just to find information, like twenty years yeah. ago before Google. What do you do? Like, it's like, do I go to an encyclopedia? Like, is that what you like? Is that like how you find information? Like, there's no internet. Yeah. Like, yeah what did no. you do? <laughs> yeah. I forgot what it was yeah, like. Yeah, and, that's right. Like, what I do know. we do? Do we just go talking and we just kind of I hope that the person library, I spoke library to? or something? Yeah, 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 yeah they're not working out. It's Tahi. true. I don't know how you find like yellow page. Like, well, <laughs> yeah, hey, yellow pages coming back. By but the way. I was trying to set up a home Turing. The thing is, like, well, um, how'd you do I'm, that back then? Like, it's like I was trying to, but but one of the things I do is I work on multiple projects. Um, and like right now, I've got yeah. different. I'm you know, writing a book. I'm. I'm, I'm oh, working, really? Working What's the book on? on? Uh, just my book. 
It's like an autobiography. Yeah, yeah. So wow, I'm working on that. I'm working on a, a children's movie. Yep. Um, children's book. Because you've got kids now of your well. own, yeah. right? How old two, are your two kids? Two in every state. Two in every state. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> what about territory? No, no, no. How old are your kids uh, now? Uh, Eleven and seven. Beautiful. So nice. It's, it's perfect. So just um, so I've got different projects going on all the time, and, and I'm juggling like so. Yeah. It's whatever's grabbed my attention um, at the time. Uh, a TV series as well. Like we're yep. working on that, just trying to you know on the background. Mm -hmm. So don't be scared. I'm working on different stuff and, and you you know you, you do a little bit here and there and, and sometimes yep. some you know, it's like planting little seeds yeah and one flowers a yeah. bit more and, and then that takes your attention and then you bring that to the well, all the others ones are going as well like you know, same thing in business yeah. Right? yeah i don't have a bit that many things going on um here sure. just being sarcastic. No, 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 Paul, i've got, you've got, got a lot that, I, I, Alex, I, yeah, I understand like, you, i was trying to be sarcastic i'm not very good at sarcasm are, i'm gonna work on that but, but the point like is people shouldn't be afraid field of, of dreams <laughs> Alex, you've got that many plans going there's not yeah. funny it, but people amazing. say oh you got to be focused on one thing yeah i get that and that's true yep but You've also got to have these different stuff happening as well. And don't be scared of people. If people freak out. Oh, my God, I've got too much. No, just don't worry. Relax and just – it's the flowering analogy. Right? Yeah, it's a beautiful flower, analogy. You know, and you give you that attention, yeah. other things, you you know, you have time. So I'm sure you've got a lot going on. Yeah, it's just kind of – Can I get a job here? You? <laughs> You'd have to work every day from a certain time to a certain time. <laughs> yeah. it's a lunch, it's, I'm sure there's lunch break now, surely. <laughs> It's pretty flexible. <laughs> it's pretty flexible hours. It's, it's not like we all stop at the same time. I know. Tahi, you have been absolutely beautiful today. Thanks for coming on board. Yeah. You've been an inspiration like always. Um, what I've what I've taken away from today is, you know, follow your passions and just do it, really. That's the biggest message. And you lo like the organic growth. Like, take your time, make your mistakes, keep on going, whether it's comedy, whether it's business, w it doesn't matter what it is. True. And also have that passion. So thanks so much for sharing that. It really means a lot to me and I'm sure everybody yeah, else. Yeah, thanks for here. It's been cool to have a chat with you as no, well. Thank you, Alex. Yeah. And thank yeah. you, Tony. And I hope the, uh, yeah, people to get a, a bit out of it. So thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah awesome, man. That's awesome. Great. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Growth Manifesto podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please head on over to iTunes and give us a five-star rating. For more episodes, please visit growthmanifesto.com forward slash podcast. 